Welcome back to Stay Tuned, I'm Tony Angelo, and today we are getting our ultimate sleeper back out on the road and hopefully eating up the highway. This is a 1998 full-on grandpop Lincoln Mark 8, uh, and we have a fully forged 4.6 liter, 32 valve, 4 cam Ford motor that is ready to suck up all the turbo boost we can throw at this thing. I cannot wait. We're gonna get this thing crammed in there, hit the dyno, and then the highway. So buckle up, grab yourself a big cup of Ovaltine, and let's go. So we've never really had a ton of success with this car, just to be completely forthcoming. Uh, the idea was let's build a cheap turbo car that's not just another LS. LS's work, by the way. Um, and so I grabbed a 1998 Lincoln Mark 8 for 1,200 bucks. Slapped on a Chinese turbo, all in we'd spent four grand or $4,200. And we were making, with a ton of DIY parts on it and like ROM tuning, 395 wheel horsepower. And that is stout. I took it to the track, it made it about 150 feet and just absolutely scattered every single rotating part inside the engine. Okay, failure number one. All right, after the first explosion, we decided to get serious with this project, or more serious, however serious we ever get here, stay tuned. Uh, I went out and bought a fully forged 4.6 stroker motor that was turbo ready, essentially. Uh, Kellogg's crank, I-beam rods, forged pistons, bullet cams, built top to bottom. I think we spent a little bit under five grand for it. Uh, it ran pretty good on the dyno until we realized it was making seven PSI of oil pressure and had wasted the bottom end. Another complete, abysmal, disgusting failure. I was sad in my heart. We pushed the car out back at our other shop. It sat there for eight months and we never really looked at it again. Total bummer, hard to come back from. Sometimes you need a little spark and we just said one day, you know what? I still want this sleeper rolling. I want to get this grandpa car ripping. Let's get back at it. Let's see what we've got and tear it apart. We dug into the bottom end of this thing. It needs a ton of machine work. We don't have the time, money, or patience for that. To take another crack at Ford four valve glory, I went out on the marketplace and bought a completely mysterious and supposedly rebuilt 4.6 liter stroker short block for 1700 bucks. I got a WAP aluminum block with a forged Ford crankshaft that was supposed to be a stroker and totally isn't, but that's okay, at least it's forged. It's got uh, H-beam rods, forged dish pistons in it. We slapped our beautiful heads on top with the bullet cams, and we're gonna put it up in the car, and now is where the fun starts. We're gonna see if this thing makes, number one, oil pressure, and number two, outrageous amounts of horsepower. I don't, I don't, at this point, I don't know which one will be, I'll be more excited about. Because oil pressure, you're gonna see a big high five if this thing makes some oil pressure. <laughs> All right, uh, Zach has been getting busy. He's got the intake manifold on this thing. We run stock exhaust manifolds into this kind of wonky turbo setup we did. The motor is sitting uh, in the subframe with the Gearstar 4R70W that's fully built, hanging off the back of it, and it's ready to drop it into the, into the car now, or shove oh. it up into the car now. Throw, Throw it. it. Throw drop, it up. Drop the car at it. Whatever Maybe we're doing. that's how we need to do this. Just, just drop take, it. The, take the arms out and just let it fall. Let it go. We're looking good so far. Let's slow down a little bit. Some things are starting, starting to move here. That Holly harness is gonna to have to get lifted up and go into the car pretty soon. Correct, somebody's gotta go in the car. Okay. And receive it. Yeah. But we are rocking and rolling this episode. It's the beginning of a new week, we're stoked. Uh, working on this thing last week kind of like really reinvigorated me on this project. <laughs> and uh, I'm excited to see just a completely boring, dull, hazed up headlight, gray, not even silver, gray Lincoln Mark 8 just making 780 wheel horsepower tearing up Pennsylvania highways, allegedly. Let's see what happens. Hey guys, we have a ton of Stay Tuned merch back in stock. All of this stuff is printed in PA by my old buddy Ralph, and uh, we've got all the classics here. We've got the, we're gonna lose the shop shirt, Stay Tuned hats, Angelo's Garage Gym, the Cyclone shirt, and of course the original Stay Tuned Garage shirt. So click the link, order up some fresh threads, and we appreciate every order. All right, let's make horsepower. So we've had our troubles with these four valve motors, but I'll say what, they do, they look pretty wicked cool. This, that motor looks red. About ready to come up in there, that big old giant snake on the top of it. It's mainly the intake. Mostly the intake is nine, nine tenths of it, but I like it. The blue is good too, that's the other tenth. Ford blue is a cool color. 
That's good. Now we're going to lower the car onto the engine until we get to the point where we can feed the Holley Terminator X harness into the car. Wow. Because we have it all sitting on the engine already. This is cool. This is cool. Getting there? Mm-hmm. Okay, keep going. Stop there. Pretty close. It's pretty close for sure. It's on. Oh, no. That was beautiful. That'll do it. That's just about perfect there. Yeah. Might even be too far. All right, come on. Stop there. That's just enough to get bolts in it. Motor is crammed in there, subframe is bolted up to the chassis. Same with the transmission crossover, so if he's in there, good. We're just gonna put it up, give it a quick once over underneath, make sure it doesn't look crazy or is bound up or banged up, and we'll be good to start attaching stuff. I know what you're doing here. Me? Yep. Yeah, I am going to now go through, torque down the subframe or K member bolts, depending on if you grew up working on. Hondas or Camaros. And then we will put the front suspension back together. Let's just try to get a couple things done. We're almost done for today here, so we're gonna do maybe drive shaft, drop the fuel tank, put it back up in there, get the front suspension done, that'll be good. Still sleeping from last week. Still sleeping from last week, and it's my kid's birthday, so I'm gonna clear out of here and go hang out with the coolest eight-year-old around. And we'll do a 19-hour day tomorrow to get this thing done, probably. It'll be great. You done this before? Yeah, once or twice. Seem pretty confident in it. Yep. All right. Tony, do you want to let this thing down? Slowly. I'm letting people down. All right. Now. Upsy-daisy. Red light on there. Hold on, hold on. Oh, it's like mood lighting. Okay. A bit more. There it is. It's a boy. All right. Okay. Wow. Go. Good job, guys. A plus. Everybody involved. Okay, it's a whole new day here at the Stay Tuned Shop. Pennsylvania looks like Sleepy Hollow at this point. It's like I came in in a foggy, dark mist. Nice. It was wild. I saw Johnny Depp riding around on horseback, but that's like, that happens every day anyway. Yeah, it's pretty standard. We'll head nod and keep on moving. Uh, we're underneath the Lincoln. We're gonna hook up the shifter, check on a couple things, get it down and start just connecting all the different systems. Now, it's quite involved. Obviously, we gotta do exhaust, figure out the turbo, wiring to the new, wiring, wiring, Oil supply to the new turbo, cooling, you know, lots <laughs> Gotta of stuff. wire the new turbo. We gotta wire the turbo up. We're doing one of those electric jobbers off of eBay. They're pretty sick. <laughs> they work good. They'll add one to two horsepowers to your ride. They're cool. <laughs> My favorite thing is like, no matter what ridiculous idea it is, if My you try hard enough. My favorite thing is him just turning that light that I was clearly using. You're to good. Do what I was doing. He's I like, he's like oh, I need to see my shit. You got a pretty face. <laughs> yeah, I'm, there you go. <laughs> I'm like, hey, that's fine, man. No, 
<laughs> You're good. No, I'm pointing at the light of the camera. No, I got it going now. We're fine. All right, good. I just thought it was funny. Yeah. You're like, this is mine now. Uh, dude, dude, we're using it. Your hands up in no man's land. <laughs> yeah, so I could you see right place, right? up in no man's land. See that land. with your fingers. Engine transfers power to the transmission via this flex plate that's bolted to the motor and this torque converter that gets driven by the flex plate and they are disconnected when you bolt everything together and then you have to generally get underneath the car and put the three, four, or six four. bolts in with a liberal amount of Loctite on them so they don't fall off because if that becomes disconnected then the engine doesn't drive anything and it just becomes an awful noisemaker. Terrible. Terrible. Now you just generally get them in, finger tight, make sure they're all in. Don't dare tighten one before they're all in. Then give it another pass, spin the engine around and tighten them all up. Uh, do this before you connect the starter so you can just knock it in neutral and then into park with your fingers instead of having to go up and down in the car a bunch of times. Super. I did that to Super show you guys how not to do it. Oh, sure. You're welcome. Sure. It's a, this is a or instructional moment. I like to show by doing the wrong thing. Yeah. So I do it. Taking this off. Just one nut. Not to shut up. <laughs> you ready? <laughs> oh, this compression makes it tough to move. Work harder, not smarter. I hope it's straight. If it's not, we'll just guess it. It is. Good? Uh, yep. Right, good. good deal. All right, I'm going to tighten up the steering shaft. I'm going to put that exhaust for the turbocharger on. That's one of the fun ones. Let's go. This car has potential. It's just that it has reached absolutely none of it. So Yet. Far. Yet. Yet. This is what we're looking for. Oil pressure, Dumb. turbo sounds, horsepower. Then it's on. <laughs> then we get some old man gear. Get out there and run the streets. Oil pressure, end of list. Like a couple of... Except the genarians, you know what I'm saying? Wow. You know what that means? Nope. Ford thing. It's a Ford thing. It's a Ford thing. Get that sucker. So this is what we built before. It just basically connects the two uh, factory exhaust manifold outlets into a big U-pipe, and then we just pipe right off of it, boom, like that, to uh, pick up the turbocharger. So the exhaust pulses slam into each other here. They argue about where to go here, and they say, oh, let's go out this way. And then they're like, bam, turbo, turbine wheel. They spin that thing, and we make turbo boost. Uh, is this an ideal flow setup? Absolutely, Absolutely not. Oh. <laughs> Definitely not. <laughs> Are we aware of that? Yes. No. I don't need 800 more people going, that's not ideal. They're going to, it doesn't matter. This is what fits. The car is incredibly cramped. We built this for the stock motor, and this has not been our problem yet. That does it, have to go in first. That's what then I that's The long what I one can sneak no, in. No, that one you can. You can sneak it in. This yeah. one you have to put in there. That has to go in now. Because this one is. Remember I said it's cramped? It's cramped. Yeah. This Order. is like, it's the 50s and there's 30 teenagers getting into a phone booth. It's that kind of cramped. A plus. All right. And because our low oil pressure on the dyno last time also murdered the turbocharger, we have a sweet upgrade I'm very excited about. Is this, does this look weird? I'm good. A little silly, but you're a silly guy. I'm a silly guy. It's true. So our turbo up pipe is two pieces. Uh, I'm going to slide it in. The turbo is fed. This is the end of the up pipe by this guy. And as you can see, there's absolutely zero room in there. Turbos and pizza, turbos and pizza. It's turbo time, but the pizza has just arrived from Tornetta's, the greatest pizza in the universe. You got a kicking and screaming. Something that says God right on it, I don't know. What does that say? What do we order? Cool, that's mine. What is it? See how excited he is? That's a meatball parm, baby. A meatball parmigiana. Yeah. Delicious, yeah. delicious. If you want to send us a pizza, there is a donate your pizza button to stay tuned right up here. Boom, boom, boom. We really appreciate it.
click the link, send us a pizza. We appreciate it big time. Today's pizza donations paid for this beauty. They came from Ryan or Deanna, who we appreciate your service. He's on deployment, looking forward to every episode. Awesome. And Joseph Hawkins, who donated enough for quite a few pies. We appreciate you, buddy. And one more Big special donator. one. Sam Crow, baby. The boys. Tell them more of that. Yeah, these are like my best friends, yeah. car dudes. We appreciate Been you. supporting. Sam Crow is your group, group text chat. Name. Yeah, group yeah. Group chat name, right? You have to have one. I think everybody with their buds has a group chat that you go into every day and just send each other either the grossest or the dumbest things you can find. Yep. Mine is called what's called Horse Girls for a while. Because we said that car guys and horse girls were the same, and now it's called the Ex Best Friends Club. I think I got sad. Shout out to them. Because we don't hang out. The boys. Enough. Anyway, tell me what your group chat name is. I'd like to hear more of them. Yeah. Yeah. Sam Crow, though. Appreciate you. Thank you. One major upgrade that is going to unlock big power on Grandpa's Lincoln is this new Turbinetics turbocharger. This is a 72, 75 millimeter setup uh, that they put together for us. They say it will make approximately, what, Barb, 650, 700 wheel horsepower. Yeah. Have good spool, still rock and roll. It has the billet wheel in here, billet compressor wheel. This unit retails for about 900 bucks. You can spend four times as much for a turbo, but we like to spend wisely here, and this thing should absolutely kill for us. So we're excited. Zach's gonna start fitting that bad boy on, and we are one step closer to firing this thing up. So we have a Holly meth setup in this thing. It's a very, very serious pump, uh, but it has a little tiny tank. And when we were on the dyno, the last time we were filling this thing every like four seconds. So guys at Holly sent us over this gigantic five gallon AEM tank, which is gonna fit just perfectly right there. Um, so I'm just gonna pull these lines off real quick. This was actually tapped for eighth NPT and had a uh, push connect fitting that uses this line. Everything else we have here uh, is the larger diameter silicone line, including the filter that's in here. So I'm just gonna pull this off the bottom of this tank, get it out of the way, and then just run a little bit of extra line. Mount this tank over here, connect it up, and we good to go. That's a hole. That old five gallons worth of force. That's a beautiful thing. I'm not gonna run out now. Job done. Cool, while Zach is finishing up, getting the turbo ready to install, just clocking everything, bolting up the V-band flange. Barb is gonna toss in this eBay radiator I picked up. Just kind of a no-name thing, but it's much thicker than the original. It's aluminum, it screams high performance, and also it's shrouded in mystery. So we'll see how it does. See that fan shroud? That's a joke I made there, that's a bad joke. I see what you did there. Shrouded mystery and plastic. So the radiator fits in the car well. Uh, the mounts for the fan are just wrong. It winds up putting it stood way off here and it, it doesn't let you even use it on that side. The top mounts look okay. We're gonna just modify these little, little clips and see if we can make it work. These were obviously not correct. These brackets on the bottom, they looked like they were just offset improperly. So I just hacked off the bottom here and opened it up a little bit so this would fit. Stacked a couple washers on this side. And then on this side, I just made a little standoff and bent this a little bit. Now it's pretty solid. Should be good, ready to rock here. Super universal style turbo, T3s, T4s, whatever. You gotta clock everything so it works perfectly with your application. Be patient, make sure you have the room you need and figure it all out. Just takes a minute, a couple of minutes, a couple hours. A lot of minutes, big minutes. Everything fits, the turbo drain plus the bolts that we have access to to lock down the CHRA, that's the thinner housing that spins. Uh, CHRA is center housing reciprocating assembly. 
A rotating assembly, maybe? Yeah, yeah, mm, that's rotating. Yeah, that's better. That's the one. I'm learning. But that is dialed in there. I knew you would know, too. Tightly packaged. All right, I think we ride like that. Our turbo is in there. I'm just going to go around, tighten up the compressor housing in the center section, get the oil lines on here. And then we're going to prime this engine, which is, spoiler alert, probably the reason why the last one exploded. Stay tuned. Time lapse, watch. Walk away. We always walk away in time lapses. Where's he going? These guys are. Yeah, editors. <laughs> editors know. <laughs> Cool. We're putting on our on three 44 millimeter waste gate. That's it. Everything in here is a tight fit. Yeah. That's it. Okay. Alright, throw a nut on there before this thing. You can let go, it won't. Yeah. Okay. So we are dialing in our boost controller on. The Cyclone, we just run a ball and spring. We haven't anything really sophisticated. This is a much more sophisticated system and you need a Holly Terminator or either that or a dedicated boost controller computer to uh, control it. And there's gonna be a three prong solenoid like this. One is the vent, one goes to the top of the wastegate and one goes to the bottom of the wastegate. Now, if you go on Holly's site, there's a great uh, diagram of how a wastegate works. Essentially, it's two sides of a diaphragm with a spring offsetting it. Blue is the top, green is the bottom. If green sees a bunch of boost, enough to basically overcome this spring, it's gonna lift that valve up and let exhaust pressure go around the turbine wheel, thereby slowing down the turbocharger and making less boost. But it's like a really gradual process. It starts to like creep open a little bit and then the turbo slows down and it you know, makes it harder to work against it. It's working against the leak and eventually it'll, it'll overwhelm it enough to get there. And that's a slow process and it makes the turbo feel kind of lazy. A better way to do it, an electronic boost controller will, will put boost, be, believe it or not, to both sides of this diaphragm, to blue and green. Uh, and here it controls it, and it's gonna just let it see boost on both sides. That spring is gonna keep it closed, and no matter how much is pressure is coming into green, it's gonna be the same amount of pressure going to blue. So that plus the spring <coughs> keeps it fully, fully, fully closed. And when it gets to this predetermined pressure, then it cuts a boost to the top and lets it just fly open, and it just moves much more quickly. And then you can play with the duty cycle and like how it comes on, and all these different things, boost by gear, boost by speed. Uh, and once you've got electronics involved, it's, it's pretty easy to really dial the curve in, no matter how the car weighs and how it leaves and how it spools, it's, it's a lot more control. Does the Cyclone still work and jam? Yes. Would it be better with one of these? Absolutely. There you go. We'll take air temp, sort it out. That's the same one. It is almost time to fire up our fully built 4.6 in our Lincoln for the second time. And we're gonna do differently this time. And probably the main reason that we exploded that other beautifully built motor is that we did not pre-lubricate this thing and we did not prime the oil pump. The oil pump is driven off the front of the motor. It's very easy for that thing to just suck air. It's not an old school motor where you can just throw a drill in where the distributor is and spin the oil pump and put oil everywhere, pre-lubing it and priming the pump. Uh, and that was our big issue. I believe it. I believe that to be the case. Yeah. I don't see any other weird smoking gun. And I've done some research. The guys that built that motor originally gave me a link. Melling, an oil pump manufacturer, has a great little short video on YouTube about how to do this. But we're gonna show you how to do it right now if you have a Ford mod motor. So this should work for the four valves, the two valves, the three valves, all the mod motors, and I think for the Coyotes too. Um, and all we're gonna do now is we have everything hooked up finally, and we are going to access oil to the top of the oil pump and to the rest of the engine, just through the oil filter housing. Okay, so the two places we're gonna cram oil are basically the inlet and the outlet of the oil filter. Uh, directly through this port is the output of the oil pump. And if I just cram, you know, I have a cord in there a couple of times, according to Melling, that it will get into the gears and make sure that those are full of oil and have some kind of volume to work with to create suction to pull oil up and out of the pan 
on uh, the initial startup, which is great. And then I'm gonna come in here with a little hand sprayer and pump as much oil as I can through the motor, trying to get it into the camshafts and into the main bearings, the rod bearings, absolutely everywhere uh, that oil goes, just so that this thing is nice and happy when it gets fired up. And hopefully we can fire this thing up, have oil pressure right off the bat, and be ready to throw a ton of boost at this thing. But the first big win we're going for in this episode is proper oil pressure out of a 4.6 on startup. So let's do it. Yeah. I want to make sure that that didn't fucking... Right, this thing is locked and loaded. This is one quart. There. Can't tell with your hand, but probably. There. Find an orifice. I think it's in. That's go it. Ahead. Yep, go ahead. There we go. Yeah, it's ripping out, all right. Getting in there? Try holding your hand on it. Yep, okay. It's just coming out now. Good? Yep. All right, let's call that primed, I guess. Here. Cool. Gotta do something. Okay, so now the oil pump is primed. We have backfed a bunch of oil on top of it so that the gears essentially should be full of oil and it's ready to make suction and put oil through the motor. And then on the other side, I'm going to now pre-lubricate the engine with one of these little handy dandy garden slash detail sprayers. I put in a quart and a half or a quart and a quarter. I'm gonna pump it up and the center of where the oil filter goes, that is what gets fed into the engine because it goes around the filter media and then up and into the engine. And we're just going to try to pump this thing free and see what happens. I'll do my best little electrical tape to make a nice seal there. I don't know how we're going to do it. See what happens. That's okay. Enough. Go That's ahead. Find it. I mean, we're moving some oil. It's oh, going yeah. somewhere. It's going somewhere. It hasn't leaked a drop, so that all Not a drop. Something. It can't go any bad places. <laughs> it's it better can. inside the engine than out of it. Yeah. <laughs> we're gonna fill the filter up with oil, slam it on there, and then call it a day, fire this thing up, hopefully cross every finger and toe we have and see what it does. All right, are you ready? A long few days for sure, but feels man, good, man. It feels good. I, I, I think it's always had so much potential, man, and it's just been such a disaster that I'd love to see some big numbers out of this thing. This is a cool idea. A completely dull, gray, you know, unassuming Mark 8. It's going to just absolutely tear the tires off this thing. I'm very excited. Very excited. And Mark 8s have like a, you know, they always were pretty cool, and they came with these. Engines, just not one that's fully built with camshafts and a big old turbo. Yeah. All right, we'll use about a half a case of brake cleaner on that thing. We'll fire it up. Yep. When you're done, spray it all over me. <laughs> cool. I am tossing the front wheels on. We're going to lower this thing down, get my laptop out, and uh, put the old tune from the dyno into this guy and get it fired up. Hopefully, again, instant proper oil pressure. Let it run, check for leaks and awful sounds, and hopefully this thing is rocking and rolling. I do have to put these things on uh, and find the right. There it is. So if you buy these tuner lugs, just be aware. They're not quite as secure if you bought more than one set as you think they might be. Because as you can see, I bought about five sets of these and all the keys are the same. All right, plug it in the old Holly Terminator X. Pow. Yeah. Mm. Is that ah. trick here? Ooh. This is that Kentucky uh, coffee. It's got some kick to it. It's after midnight. It's time to see if this thing works and makes a little pressure and doesn't make any horrible noises. We should have plenty of time to fire it up, see that oil pressure, take this as a big, big win, get stoked and hit the sack, uh, and come back in the morning, get this thing ready to go to the dyno. I am now, since we swap computers all the time, 
This Terminator X Max Holly computer has never seen this Ford motor, correct? Uh, Brad sent us over the last tune. He emailed it to us. Um, it should be certainly close enough to get this thing fired up and check it for oil pressure. All right, I'm looking at the file name. It's 4.6 COP, coil unplug. Boost, 4R70W. Stay tuned, that's us. Ace, that's Brad. Dash two. Tony doesn't kill it tune. Double save. That's the right one. All right, you ready for this? Yep. Come on, baby. Come on! There we go. Yo, 90! Woo! Yes! Yes! 90. She's making 90 PSI of oil pressure. Yes! That's something. It's a hell of a lot more than seven. We will take it. I know no coolant's in it. And a brand new turbo, so I can't do anything. But it's making oil pressure, and that feels fantastic. I might have something here. 88. Sounds smooth. I don't see any leaks. I'm going to rev it. I'm going to rev it up a little bit. All right. That feels good. Woo! Oh, baby. In yeah. the morning, we will fill it up with coolant, check for any leaks, and then take this thing off to the dyno. So I'm excited. That felt great. That feels really good. All right, after a long night, we have Grandpa's Turbo Sleeper Lincoln strapped to the dyno here at PSR. I could give you the long story about all the different failures we've had with this thing. I don't want to do that. I want to get this thing fired up and see if it makes as much horsepower as it does oil pressure, or hopefully like, 10 times as much. 10 times. 10 times. Ooh, that's a good day. 10 times. Let's spin the turbo for good luck. Rub the snake. Yeah, rub the snake, that's right. Oh yeah, that's Rub the warm. snake, rub the snake, rub the snake. All right, come on, Brad. Start at 20 pounds and then work your way up. Oh, I thought we were working our way down. We'll start at 20 and then go to five. All right, good idea. <laughs> what we did was remove the bottom end and then shove a new one in there. Yep. And put a big turbo on it. Put this big, sweet, swirly, swirly, the swirly boy from Turbinetics. Yeah. Pizza, ooh, pizza, ooh, pizza. Ooh, 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 ooh. Show it to us. Whoa. What? Sorry. <laughs> the pizza, you animals. It's pizza time. Oh, Barbara. Oh, that's that hot John. It is today. Delicious. <laughs> I would be staying away from that one. Messes. Yeah, maybe don't eat that one. <laughs> that good? That looks pretty good. Two hundred and eighty-four horsepower at the tires. That's a start, boy. <laughs> Double it. For a well, so now what we yeah. can do? Double it and give it to the next guy. <laughs> Is that how that works? Yeah. <laughs> Put this, I was just an exploratory run. Double it. Double it. Yeah, double it. Give it to the next guy. Let's go. <laughs> All right, pull that plug out. Barb, let's have a look at that plug. It doesn't look like it did anything. 
He's looking for a spark plug. It's right there. Yeah. There's a mark on it's it. It's right in front of the light, dude. We got after it on that one. Let that was stay. 300, I saw it. That was what? Three something. 330. 330. Hey! How many boosts? Enough to open a waste gate finally. Oh yeah, that's not leaking there, a lot of pressure. 345, 330, 345. At five grand and 4100, we're just getting started. So after a couple of runs to about 5,000 RPM, Grandpa's Lincoln just off 10 pounds of boost is making about 330 wheel horsepower. We have much higher hopes, but we're trying to take it conservatively. Uh, there's a little bit of a question about the actual ignition timing happening. So we are continually pulling spark plugs out, throwing in new ones and reading the plugs old school style, which is a totally legitimate way to do it. So we're going to take a little bit more time and try to not smoke this setup right off the bat. But it sounds killer. It's running strong and it's time to keep turning it up. You know, we're talking, I want to run 18 pounds of boost maybe. I want to hear this thing at like 7,500 RPM. I want to get there, but one step at a time. Baby steps. You know, old people, grandpas take little baby steps. Like this. They get there. They get there. They get the job done. What's the oil pressure look like now? Uh, and we got too much in there? It was good the entire way. Hell yeah, what's it's that the, number? It was an 80. 80, <laughs> yeah, all right. Good, good, good. Why don't we not turn it up and let's add a little more time to it? Let's see what it does. Fresh it's plug. Zero. Well, you, Wait, what do, you, what do you good. have on now? Offset. It's pulling three. Okay, try it at zero. So if it jumps up 30 horse. Because it just jumped up 20 now. Yeah. If it knocks the rings, you have that you have that crankcase <laughs> ventilation thing right in the front there, yeah. right? You'll see it in that. It is smoking less now than it was before. Okay, so that means it's closing the ring. It's good. Yeah. Um, if, it, if, it sh if it shutters the rings, you'll see a puff out of that. What do you want me to do? Just wave at me. Jeez. <laughs> Such a long pole, I'll uh, see it. Okay. <laughs> wave I thought I could see it kind of. Send him a text. <laughs> the text? What's the text? I think I'm calling you. Uh, call watch him. for the, if hey, the bye. rings chirp together. It flutters. <laughs> Flutter is the word. We're going to see a bunch of smoke come out of the catch can, and then we're going to use smoke signals to tell Brad. <laughs> I'm going to get my phone out get and go, my, we're gonna hey, Brad. Get my, we're going to blank it out. Make some smoke Shut signals. Shut her down. Shut her down. I'll email. What's your email? I'll get it to you. <laughs> okay. Uh, you got a pager? I'll page you. You call me back. <laughs> I'll tell you what happens. Okay, back it down. Yeah. And then turn the boost up. Probably fine at like 14 degrees, 15 or uh, 14 degrees. I'd rather run boost than ignition timing. Yeah. Oh yeah, I always want to do that. Good, we're all on the same page. Great, everybody's on the same page. Turn the boost up. Double that boost and give it to the next guy.
34. There we go. That's something. Look at that torque. 434, 466. We're moving on up. That's boost up. Double A. Ignition timing. Big question mark. How much boost? Don't tell us. Let's let it all be a mystery. More. Double it. Yeah. Double it. Send it to the next person. Give us the print out at the end of the evening. That's an honest 500 horsepower at the motor. Horse puppies. Let's keep going. Four forty six. Four seventy six torque. That's good. That's a lot of torques. That'll spin one tire. It's gonna do something. How much boost is that? Fourteen. No, Double it. This car is gonna be a rocket ship. I don't know if we're gonna hit six hundred, but we're gonna hit something. Oh, also, it's staying together. Yeah. All right, adding some more boost, pushing for sixteen or so. Let's see what this thing does. We are getting close to the limits of our injectors, our 60 pound injectors. We're gonna see how much power we can make with this thing, and we are getting up there. If we make close to 500 wheel, I'm gonna be thrilled. <laughs> 499 oh foot pounds at the tire. That tire's gonna hate this car you. Car is gonna be an animal. Ooh. An animal. Tony. What? We're at 87% injector duty cycle. 87% injector duty cycle. Rule of thumb is what? Stop at about 85? I usually stop at 80. Yeah, okay. Let's go to 90. Let's go push a little. Yeah, let's go a couple points for you. Alright, we're at 475 wheel horsepower, which means this thing's making 580 at the crank or something. Bananas. Uh, we are, we have 60 pound injectors in there and we realize that we're running out of injector. They're at 83% duty cycle. Rule of thumb, you don't really want to run them over 80, 85 because you start to, they start to not work as well. Uh, we're going to push it a little harder, just have some fun, see if we can hit closer to 500 wheel horsepower. At that point, this thing will be just an absolute beast, but we are making more power than this thing has ever made. It's staying together. It sounds incredible. It's making 500 pound feet of torque at the tires. This thing's gonna be the nastiest sleeper ever. I cannot wait. To, I cannot wait to drive it. This is fun, but like, let's see what it does on the street. Seventy-five. Lots of horsepower. Lots, a lot of horsepower at the tires, boy. <laughs> it's a lot. You know what a Hellcat does? Five sixty. Yeah. It's Ninety less than a, than a Hellcat. That feels pretty good. That does feel good. Feel pretty good. Pretty all right. Grandpa's solution. Yeah. So we are running into an issue. If you recall, we are running our tiny restrictive stock exhaust manifolds into that pretty ridiculous U pipe, and then it's getting fed up. We knew it'd be restrictive, and I think we're finally getting at close to point. finding the limits of this thing. It's making yeah. 475 horsepower at the tires and 510 foot pounds of yeah, torque, pound feet of torque. 50 horsepower. Yeah, it drops. You can watch it oh, drop yeah. off. You want to put a degree or two of timing in it, yeah, or what? We'll run the same roll with, with a degree. In it. Just one more. Okay. Dude, what goes down must come up. Don't I think is say what they that say. Those words. Not yeah, not one more. Let's one more degree. All right, put in two, put in two. I like that guy. We're out of injector, we're gonna add a little timing. <laughs> and I'll just do this, if I do this, <laughs> shut it down.
back. Hey, Come on, dude. We're calling it 500. 500 wheel horsepower. You know what that means? It wants more time. It loved the time. You Give it another it. degree. You hear it. It was like, <laughs> burp, burp, and it took off. One degree, one degree, one degree, one degree. Dude, it sounds nuts. It sounds so good. This thing at 500 wheel horsepower might crack like a 10 second quarter mile. It's going to be nasty. Sounds awesome. It's running great. Oh, like 499 507. This thing is an animal. That's stupid. Let's That's that. awesome. I'm so it's through those <laughs> tiny stock exhaust manifolds. That's saying running out of injector. 1087 at 124 is what's what the, the internet like? says. 3900. Yeah. With him in it. Plug if we want to go oh, right. we do. Oh. Let's not look at it and just go. Yeah, well, <laughs> dude, we need I saw six... 499 while I was like, yes! We, <laughs> we need, need six like, tenths of a horsepower, like, dude. Yeah. I saw it said 499. I go, you gotta be kidding. I know. Every time we get her, we're like, well, I want to hit this. We're like, how about one less? Yeah. Well, that was what? What was that? Was that on the his 5.3? The 5.3. We saw the number yeah. and then it was like 498 or something, yeah. 398 or whatever it was. We're going to see how big the methanol jet is, and maybe we can cool that charge down with a bigger jet. Look at that. There's meth in there. It sure is working. One more pound of boost. All right. Torque at the tire. Let's go. Hell yeah. That feels That's good. good. That's real good. Bananas. It's in one piece. It makes killer oil pressure and it makes stupid horsepower. We are now out of time and out of injector. <laughs> this thing is awesome. Grandpa's sleeper Lincoln finally lives. That is it for this episode of Stay Tuned. This has been a complete blast. I am back in love with this thing. I cannot wait to drive it. Uh, thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe. We will see you guys next time. We got to get this thing out on the street. This is killer. Nice, nice work, bud. Hard week. Hard week. Big week. Good. This thing it. is a pain in the <laughs> to work on, but we did it. <laughs>